I want now to interpret to you as leaders of the church, as pastors, and as members, and as Christians in this nation of Kenya, so that you know what God wants to do. There are three dimensions of this revival. I'm now interpreting the revival. There are three dimensions. You know, the, the revival, per se, we are talking about is prophetic. It is in prophecy that God revealed that this revival, and he permitted me by his grace to officially announce the start of the revival. But I want to give you the dimensions of this revival. Are you going to be a partaker? Yes. Or are you going to take part? How many of you want to take part in this revival? You know, to be a partaker is to become a beneficiary. To take part is to be a participant. Participants will have to sacrifice. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm giving the dimensions of this revival. So that you see whether it is something you can embrace or employ. To be a partaker and to be a participant. They are not the same. To be a partaker is to be a beneficiary. But what is the expectation of God? God wants every one of us to take part and to become a partaker. Every church member, every leader, every minister, every evangelist, regardless of whatever gift God has given you, he wants you to, be, to take part in the revival and at the same time, be prepared to be a partaker. Because this revival is not without benefits. Praise God. Are we connected? I know today is a miracle day, but I'm talking to the leaders this morning. We are, we are beginning. We will do the miracles. Miracle is, is not a teaching, it's a gift. <laughs> it's just like those of you who have a gift of speaking in tongues, you can speak in your house. I can also do miracle in my house, in the market, that's my gift. Uh, even today I'm doing many, many. <laughs> it's not a big issue. When you are praying, you, you speak in tongues. And me, when I pray, I speak in miracles. Every one of us, according to our area of gifting, these are the three dimensions of, uh, of the revival. Number one is a spiritual dimension or a spiritual revival. It's a spiritual revival. Praise God. Hallelujah. When we talk about spiritual revival, We are talking about the restoration of the gifts that God had given you. We are talking about the zeal and the seriousness that people had before. Within this period, every gift that God had given you will be revived. I say it will be revived. Some of you received a gift maybe of prophecy in a single day and it disappeared. It has never appeared again. I have come to tell you it will appear again. For this is the time. It will appear again. Look at your life and see something that you are given from above that disappeared. A time has come. For that thing to appear again in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anything that God had given you, and at one moment it disappeared, it will come again. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you were praying at one time, 
you lost even the, the need and the reason to pray. The Holy Spirit is saying, if you are ready and prepared for the revival, that power to pray will be given back to you again. I said that power to pray will come to you again. I know I'm talking to people that can't understand why they cannot pray. But I have come to tell you, the same God that started in you is starting it again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. When we talk about spiritual, we are not talking about spiritual awakening. So many people follow Jesus, but they don't see the impact of their belief in their life. Some have lost the meaning of what they are doing. Some cannot even comprehend why they are still believers. When they look around their life, they cannot see anything that they can associate with their belief. They believe in miracles, yet they have never received one. They believe in healing, yet they are always sick. That will be a thing of the past from this hour in Jesus' name. Spiritual revival. Many of us cannot pray anymore because anytime we pray, the resistance is too much that we don't see the breakthrough. Even our, we have never had the breakthrough to the extent that our prayer life has broken down. God will revive it. Hallelujah. Are you prepared to experience the miraculous? It will be done for you again and again until the miraculous becomes your lifestyle. Kenya, the miracles will be your lifestyle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you know what God told Israel? Whatever you plant, you will harvest. That is the season. I say this is the season. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number two. Economic revival. The second dimension is economic dimension. The economic revival. It is a lie for someone to teach about moving forward spiritually, backward economically. It is going, there is going to be economic revival. Even the first day when the gospel was preached by the disciples, they said, go sell your land. Go do whatever you want. Bring the, the resources. That means when there's spiritual revival, there is also economic revival. This economic will be both corporate and individual. We will prosper as a church. We will prosper as the body of Christ. But that prosperity of the church is a product of the prosperity of individual members of the church. Yeah. Every member seated here this morning, expect a financial turnaround in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Expect a financial turnaround in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I reach to your life supernatural tenders in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. I am telling you, be prepared for economic revival and shock. How will that happen? God is going to work with those who are ready. Tell your neighbor, position yourself. This is the season. Let me tell you, any seed that is not taken to the garden can never germinate. And be a neighbor, position yourself. Take your position. And you will be in position. Hallelujah. Take your position this morning, your prophetic position. I have captured number one. That's my position. Sit down. Economic revival is a reality. 
I know you, are, you have overdrafts. I know you cannot comprehend your financial situation. You are incapable of paying your house rent. You are incapable of meeting your needs. But I've come to announce economic revival. This is a prophetic message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever God says, will you say? Amen. I can see your economic situation revived in Jesus' name. Some of you have, have never been economically stable. But God is saying, as he's reviving the economic abilities of other people, he's pushing your abilities forward in the name of Jesus. Another dimension is social dimension. That's the third dimension. I'm interpreting the revival. Social dimension. The word social comes from society or socializing. That means the ability to stick together as one people. Already you, are, you realize Kenya is one nation. Right now as I speak in Kenya, there is no Luo, there is no Kisi, there is no Luya. We are just Kenya. Hallelujah. But the social dimension, especially for the pastors that are listening to me, you know some pastors are totally unable to function because of their families. Every time they try to move, either your husband becomes the problem or your wife becomes the problem. That's why some, most of the pastors are either divorced, separated, or even though they are staying together, it's for public. It is privately they are separated, but publicly they are together. But that is going to be a thing of the past in Jesus' name. God is saying, I am bringing families together. Hallelujah. If you are in a family and things are not working, the season has come. Hallelujah. I don't see your excitement, but the season has come. It's a turn around. Hallelujah. Whatever thing that made you to be separated, God is going to work on that thing. Present it to him as a prayer item. Tell him, God, this is the reason why we separated. Please work it out for me. God is able to do much more than you can ask or imagine. He's able. What is happening, what you don't know, is that some things could not have happened because the season was not due. Let me tell you, you may plant and they never grow. Because the season is not due. Like I'm telling you why it will happen now. Because it's a season. When it is a season, even a seed that was not planted by the farmer, as long as it is in the soil, it will grow. Season. We are talking about the season of revival. Praise God. Hello? Yes. What are we talking about? Season. The reason why your families will be happy. Many of you will enjoy supernatural happiness. Many of you, for a long time, you have not enjoyed happiness. You have lived. You have not enjoyed happiness. But God Almighty will make it happen in Jesus' name. Who qualifies to be a partaker? In this season. Or what are the qualities. That one should possess. To become a partaker. Or a beneficiary. Of the revival. Number one. And this must be the top on the list. Every time. Holiness. Number one is holiness. 